two defenders on him. DeCole Wolf open side. He's tied up by Green. Throws it back up top. James puts up the three. Oh, it's good! LeBron James from downtown! And the shot clock expires! What's going on, dudes and dudettes? So, yeah. Thought I'd do the video here again, but... Yes, as of the other day, there were some rumors going around that the Chargers could be interested, as many teams are interested in the fact that Julio Jones, the wide receiver from the Atlanta Falcons, is maybe available for trade. I think a lot of people are just putting them on there because they have the cap room to be able to bring in his type of contract this season and for the next three years as well. I think it's like it's not that bad. It's like a three-year, 30-some-odd million dollar deal that's left, so they can do that. They might lose out on another guy they have. They might have to give up Mike Williams, which I think is a better deal to get rid of him and go after Julio Jones, but I don't know. It would be very interesting to see him in LA in a different area after being 10 years out there in Atlanta, but hopefully. I always thought he was going to get traded to Green Bay and that would be the reason why <laughs> Aaron Rodgers stays, but I don't know, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Then, yes, according to like a lot of places, even Vegas has the Chargers favored in 11 games next season, so they should be, what, 11 and 6, I guess is the record now with 17 games, which is a pretty good record, I guess. It could get you in the playoffs or barely in there, but it is still high expectations for them and even ESPN after the draft ranked them in their power rankings at number 17 so of course right in the middle <coughs> of the NFL whether you're gonna make the playoffs or not it could be a 9 and 8 7 and 9 record something like that as usual and then they're also being mentioned in a couple articles that they're one of the four teams next season that could break out and become are set to take off stuff so they're saying stuff like that like a lot of good positive things about the Chargers even though they do have a first time rookie head coach and it's only a quarterback in his second year who people will be ready for now instead of how they weren't last year I know they got some better players but I don't think they're 100% there so yeah it's gonna be pretty interesting I'm gonna take these off because I could see the glare on them a lot and then yeah, when it comes to Duke, I believe in that picture there's like 16 guys playing on teams. A couple guys have already got knocked out from Indiana and all those other teams and stuff that didn't make the playoff after the play-in. But yeah, as of before the playoffs started, there were 16 Duke guys on rosters in the NBA, which is pretty cool. And of course, Jason Tatum in the play-in game against Washington had to go off because he kept losing guys during the game. and. I'd already lost a couple guys before the game and he scored 50 points I mean we'll see how many more times Jason Tatum can score 50 points for them and yeah they got the victory which is important but you just don't know how long he's gonna be able to do that and if the injury bug gets him or he just ends up being too exhausted and they can't go any farther so we'll see how that matchup is I think it's against the Nets which is would be a pretty big upset if he can do that and then also we have a mock NFL draft for 2022. Yes, they're already coming out, it's crazy, but it's only interesting because there are a couple of guys who get selected for from USC and for the Chargers. So first guy selected of my teams is the quarterback, Keaton Slovis. I believe he's going to Pittsburgh, which is pretty interesting. It's not like number one, number two overall. I think it was like number 13, which I could work with, and then the Chargers get a guy, but of course they're picking in the middle of the draft, so I'm assuming they don't make the playoffs. But they pick a defensive end from Purdue, George Karlaftis, or Carl Karlaftis, I don't know how you say his last name, but his freshman year, two years ago, he was one of the standout guys in the Big Ten, especially as a freshman, and he was doing good last year, but then he got injured, but I think he'll be able to show what he can do. and. He'll definitely be a great pick for them in the middle right there of the first round. And then you compare him up with Joey Bosa. And 
be freaking crazy to have two Big Ten guys with that type of caliber as your defensive ends. Be freaking awesome. But hopefully he's there. But hopefully the Chargers aren't picking that early too in the draft. And then the last guy from USC, of course, who's been on these mock drafts a lot as well is the defensive end Drake Jackson from out here at Corona Centennial. Yeah, I think he went to Philadelphia, but it's cool. He's still getting some first round love as of this second. I still believe he needs to work on a lot more stuff to be a first round pick, but they're already liking him a lot. So we'll see how that goes. Then ex-USC wide receiver Marquise Lee has decided to sign with the 49ers. Seems like a one year deal, like most people this year. But yeah, it sucks we didn't get to see him last year. He opted out of COVID and thought he was going to be playing with the Patriots, but ended up not. So it'll be cool to see him at least playing for another California team. And then the Chargers also claimed a wide receiver off of waivers in Austin Prothel, no, Pro, Pro, Pro Hell. I don't know how you say his last name, but he's been in and out of the league and in other types of leagues of pro sports as well. Um, it doesn't seem like he's going to make the team. Could be a practice squad guy. I don't know how good he is on special teams. If he can make it there, but I don't know. Doesn't seem like a, that huge of a pickup. Then Gary Trent Jr., the ex-Duke player, they're saying that he's in line for a big contract this offseason coming up just because of how well he played towards the end of the year once he got traded from Portland to Toronto and was able to be in a starting role. And <clears throat> I think he is just because Toronto is pretty low on the type of talent they're going to have there anyway. So they're going to throw as much money as they can at him, at him to keep him. I don't know if he is restricted or not, but of course, they're most likely, if he is restricted, they're going to match any contract, no matter how astronomically high it is. So congrats to him getting that money. Then there was also an NBA mock draft, but... I don't know, I might have to be a fan of the Orlando Magic because, I mean, Wendell Carter Jr. is there right now from Duke. He got sent there because Nikola Vucevic, the ex-USC player, was traded to Chicago. But as of this mock draft, <laughs> the Orlando Magic have two top 10 picks. And of course, they pick guys from my schools. They pick Evan Mobley at number three, I believe it was, from USC, the power forward. And they also pick Jalen Johnson the small forward from Duke who left early so yeah a lot of my type of players go to Orlando to die I guess but I don't know at least they'll have the opportunity to be able to play and hopefully show what they can do then yeah the Lakers been on a crazy run right now they did get beat the Golden State Warriors in their playing tournament it was a 103 to 100 last second three by LeBron James and a lot of good defensive two defensive stops for the Lakers at the end uh, to seal that game which is great to see um, yeah everybody was there it looked pretty hyped even though there's only like five or six thousand people of the 20,000 or so that should be there and yeah it was just great to see even when it comes to playing Phoenix now that as they're the number seven seed playing the number two the Lakers are actually favored to win the series and they're favored by a lot. They were favored more earlier in the week, but now it's come down pretty close. I don't know betting odds, but they're still projected to win that series. And if they do, they go on to play Denver, the winner of Denver. Well, it's most likely going to be Denver, I believe. Denver or Portland, because of, because the Clippers and everyone else is up higher on the thing, so they won't see them till the Western Conference Finals, which is good. But hopefully the Lakers get enough momentum be able to knock some of these games out because last year or this last uh, playoffs they were able to win games within five games and have a couple days off to rest before the next round so hopefully that can happen as well but yeah it looks pretty set up for them to be able to at least contend to get to the finals I know Chris Paul would not, <laughs> not, nothing would do like he would love more than to beat LeBron James in the playoffs finally but I don't know, Phoenix might be here a bit too soon. So, I don't know, I'm hoping for the best. We'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully, uh, as of right now, LeBron and everybody is healthy. So, that's all we could ask for. And yeah, pretty much it, pretty much it sports-wise. And then of course, the Hella Mega Tours are calling it. That's what it was called last year with 
Uh, Green Day, Fall Out Boy, and Weezer is now officially coming back this summer. And it's going to be at Dodger Stadium again. So I'm thinking about going, but I mean, it is pretty crazy how far away you have to sit, pay like a hundred bucks. I don't think it's really worth it, but I don't know. I haven't, I've never seen Fall Out I haven't seen all of them live, so I might end up doing that. And then, it, <coughs> excuse me, yes, Angels and Airwaves finally released a new song called Euphoria. It's pretty good. It's uh, I like the drums and there's like a nice guitar riff in there that goes throughout the song. A lot of nice guitar parts and synth stuff. It kind of sounds like a, a newer, beefed up version of a Rush song, which is pretty cool. And it's about some pretty crazy stuff. Like if you had some issues while you were a child and then you go into an intense relationship later in life, but that baggage ends up coming to bite you in the ass, of course, because that's how we all are we always deal with our past and baggage so it has a nice meaning good good stuff to that song take it give it a listen if you'd like and yeah thanks for watching people like and subscribe comment down below let me know what y'all think have a great rest of your day and yes angel and airways will be in hollywood in november so definitely think about going to that bye